we had this story yesterday that caught our attention immediately, which is that the NFL, the National Football League, is considering a charge to play the halftime show. Right now, the three candidates for the 2015 Super Bowl halftime show are Rihanna, Katy Perry, and Coldplay. And those with uh, knowledge about this, uh, which is not me, say that the NFL now wants to charge them because, of course, there's a lot of money to be made when you get that kind of exposure. Although I have a friend in the record business that lasts about two weeks and then it vanishes. But nonetheless, to talk to us about this, uh, we have from Forbes magazine contributor Will Burns. Will, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Now, can you imagine what the conversation would be like between the NFL when Paul McCartney played the halftime show a couple years ago and said, uh, hey, Paul, here's the deal. We want you to do the halftime show, but it's going to cost you. Sir Paul. <laughs> yeah, no, forget it. it. It wouldn't happen. I've actually worked with Paul McCartney in my past, and I know for a fact that, you know, a lot of these artists have, have huge egos, and it's justifiable, you know. They've earned these egos. I just saw Paul McCartney at Dodger Stadium. There were 60,000 people in there to see one guy. Because yeah. he has a band that plays with him. Nobody cares. Their names aren't George, John, and Ringo. Nobody cares about They're wonderful. Nobody cares. There were 60,000 people paying real money to see one guy. That's right. And there's no way Paul McCartney uh, would ever pay to play anywhere. So what made the NFL think that Rihanna, Katy Perry, and Coldplay would fork over? Because if I'm a manager of any of these acts... I'm not going to agree to this, no matter what the publicity is, because you're now establishing that you're a second-tier superstar. I agree. Uh, well, I think the logic is pretty clear from NFL's perspective. Their, their charge right now from Goodell is to increase revenue, as with any corporation. That, that makes sense, and I have no gripes with that. But uh, to, to make incremental money on the backs of the artist, to me, is, is a monumental mistake, because... It, that that single transaction, that exchange of money from artist to NFL, changes the entire dynamic of the halftime show, in my opinion. Well, above and beyond that, I, I mean, if that's part of the uh, draw of the Super Bowl. In fact, the ratings for the halftime show are actually higher than the game. 115 million people watched Bruno Mars at halftime, whereas 112 million were averaging, according to Nielsen, for the actual game itself. And if you're going to establish that you're going to charge the uh, performers at the halftime show, then why not charge the teams to play in the Super Bowl? I was thinking the same thing, and I wish I thought of that for my, my, my post on Forbes. You're right, and why not the refs, too? You know? Yeah, sure. They're all, they're all going to get uh, recognition from this and be able to say for the rest of their lives that they refed the Super Bowl game. So why, why not make them pay? And we're talking with Will Burns. He's a contributor of Forbes magazine. You can follow him on Twitter at Will O. Burns. That's the uh, Twitter handle. You know, Will, there's a, there's a number of radio stations, around, and I'm really actually reluctant to say this out loud just in case somebody in management hears it and comes up and says, hey, why didn't we think of that? But there are a number of radio stations across this country and in the city of Los Angeles who simply sell shows. You can be on the air, but people pay for the time, and then they say, oh, look at that. I've got a talk show at uh, you know, K-Whoopi or whatever the station is. Uh, and, and and I think that we really are going to see this more and more. There's enough people who either have sufficiently ego or or wallets that want to buy a measure of fame. And I I think that producing organizations or people with platforms that offer access to enormous audiences will continue to push the envelope and say, look, we're providing you with an opportunity to expose your your art to so many people. Think of the money you'll make when they see you play at the halftime, and that's probably the argument they're making. I, I think that's true, uh, but I do think that this NFL arrangement is entirely different because it's an established entity. You know, we have an expectation when we see the halftime show that the artist that is chosen was chosen for pure reasons, that they were, they're awesome, that they're at the top of their career, that they had a, a banner year the year prior. Bruno Mars is a... Uh, you know why we lost him? Why? Because he only... We didn't pay him enough? He, no, he only paid for four and a half minutes of the interview. And I'm sorry, the meter ran out on... Uh, see if we can get him back. <laughs> 
Uh, no, that's it. He didn't write a big enough check to KBC, so we had to terminate the interview. Uh, Steve Ballmer just bought the NFL halftime show. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, he could. <laughs> if anybody could buy the halftime show, Steve Ballmer could. And he'll just come out and yell about the Clippers for 12 minutes. That ought to be quite a production. Oh, I saw a compilation. He's do that auto-tuned. Of, I, I, I saw a compilation yesterday of all of his, you know, public outbursts, and it was is very funny. Yeah, he was a little over the top on that, but you got to love the enthusiasm that uh, he brought from a safe distance. Mm-hmm. Los Angeles, <laughs> and I live in a van down by the river. We have Will Burns back, Forbes a contributor. Will, we were uh, speculating that the reason we lost your call is that you hadn't paid us enough for the full interview. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, well, the, the check's in the mail because I'm back All right. on. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, so uh, is this going to go through, or, or is the, uh, there enough blowback on this that uh, the NFL is going to back down? Well, I, who knows? We'll see. I, I, I don't think that the artists are going to be willing to do this. I, I think they're too big. They don't need the press. I mean, of course, it would be great to be on the Super Bowl. But uh, from my perspective, they don't need it. They're already at the top of their game. So my guess is that the the blowback is going to be significant enough that the NFL is going to have to change this policy, um, you know, immediately, or else there could be a real protest from the artists, which I suggest in my article. Yeah, well, and then the, this also opens the door. Why not, uh, you know, uh, p- charge people to sing the nominated songs at the Academy Awards telecast or the national anthem before a World Series game? I mean, this the, it's it's you're opening up a whole new revenue stream in an industry that isn't shy about grabbing new revenue streams. Uh, the, only, the only industry that's worse than professional sports for whoring itself out is the airlines. Well, exactly. And the thing that's hey, the worst thing how about much, this is... is we, the, we, we, could sell, we could sell seats to pilot the plane. Would you like to fly a 737? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, it turns it into an infomercial. Yeah. You know what I mean? It turns the halftime show into an infomercial for Katy Perry. All right. Hey, listen, thanks for coming on with us. We'll appreciate it. Will Burns, Forbes contributor.